Good afternoon, good evening or good morning and welcome to Canberra City Church Online. Please feel free to visit our website or drop us a line on Facebook. We'd love to hear from you. Before I begin too much, let me acknowledge the land on which I live. Holy Spirit, we evoke your blessing on this country and on us. We acknowledge the Indigenous elders of this area, the Ngunnawal people who once lived here and whose sacred forebearers came changing forever an older way of life. Bless us, bless their descendants. Help us to join our hands and hearts together. Help us to heal one another and the land so that our lives may flow with harmony and love and deep respect. Amen. I am a white, cisgender, eight-generation Irish, and my identity is being one of God's beloved children. Last week, at the beginning of Lent, we looked at inclusion. This week, we will look at being under God's protection and healing. Let me offer us a call to worship. On this second Sunday of Lent, we gather we come to remember and celebrate the life of Jesus and how he chose to live and serve our Mother Lord. We come as we are, all her beloved children, to worship God. Let us come close to God as God comes close to us. I want to begin with a prayer. Let me pray. Loving, living God, magnificent and mysterious, there is no place where you are not, but there are some places whose beauty or whose long history of being set apart for worship make it easier for us to be drawn into your presence. It pains us, as it did Jesus, to see such holy places being desecrated by conflict, exploration or abuse. We weep with you for those who have died in violent attacks on mosques, churches, Hindu temples, Sikh Gurats. And we too have dishonoured you and given our churches a bad name whenever we've listened to gossip or helped to spread it. When we have fallen out over something that seemed important at the time, but actually doesn't matter too much at all. Or we've come here with anything other than worship at the forefront of our minds. Forgive us, we pray, and help us. Draw us into the warmth of your embrace. Hold us until our anger and confusion and fear begin to dwindle and we can go back out into a world again, ready to see other people including with whom those we disagree, through your eyes of compassion and grace. May our journey with Jesus on the way to an end that we know so well be for us not a journey towards death, but a journey into life, hope and healing. Not for us alone, but the for world which we forever infuse with your love because of him. Amen and the peace of the risen Christ be with you all. I invite you to listen to some music.
bring to you the reading from Luke's Gospel, Luke chapter 13, 31 to 35. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to him, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. And he said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listening, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day, I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who sent to it. How often I have desired to gather your children together, as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you are not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus may not have known exactly what lay ahead for him in Jerusalem, but he knew what he was doing when he left the Galilean country behind and set his face towards Jerusalem. Jesus knew his identity as a prophet and as a son of God. He tells the Pharisees, Go tell that fox Herod for me. Listen, I'm casting out demons and I'm performing cures today and tomorrow. And on the third day I finish my work. And yet tomorrow and the next day I must be on my way because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jesus knows the stakes of being what he is, and yet he follows God's call on him. He sees the role of God as one of a mother hen, gathering her brood under her protective wings, safe from the ravages of the foxes of life. In Luke's time, that meant not just Jerusalem or Israel, but the Gentiles as well. Like the Pharisees and the Sadducees that Jesus encounters, we are often not willing to be gathered in with people that are not like us, instead taking our chances elsewhere. We think we are truly free, but instead even more at risk and vulnerable to the sly seductions of the foxes among us. Picture for a moment a mother hen wandering into the bushes with her chicks as the chicks follow along. And if she thought she might be in danger, she would cluck at them and they would run to her and disappear again. The mother hen looked after her chicks very well. She cared about them and she wanted to keep them safe. And I don't know if you're familiar with what happens when a fox gets into a hen house. Then you know the times, the most times the mother hen herds her chicks under her wings for protection and bears her breast so that fox must kill her first before it can get to the chicks. It is the only defence she has. Later there will be fluttering of feathers and motherless chicks running around, but at least they're alive. Though their mother may be dead, they are given the chance to live. The fox, being the predator, could easily lend the image of the hen to being a victim. Interestingly, the image doesn't stay there but moves on. It becomes about giving life on. Perhaps one way to say it would be to pay it forward. It is dependent, though, on those chicks listening and coming straight away and following the instructions of the mother hen. I wonder perhaps where you are 
or where you see yourself in the story and are you stuck in your position? I often wonder about the victim's state of being. I've met people who feel comfortable in that space. It's like being wrapped in a wet blanket, uncomfortable and not quite right, but hard to risk going without one for fear of what might happen next. Will I be too exposed? I could just be too cold without it. It can be very hard to move from that position. But one way of being able to is to hear the truth and then perhaps offer to help others. One of the protective factors of people going through a disaster, whether natural or otherwise, is being able to help. You see it during the floods, neighbours helping each other out with a clean-up, turning up on strangers' doorsteps with mops and buckets ready to help. Jesus certainly knew he had his face set towards Jerusalem and he was genuinely and profoundly sad when he looked at the people who rejected his message and refused his comfort and protection. But he wasn't surprised. Nor did he beat himself up for his failure to reach them. He was one in a long line of prophets, persecuted by those who were trying to help because the truth was not what people wanted to hear. Of course, we can move on then to the image of the chicks. They only have protection if they listen to their mother's voice and heed to her instructions. I wonder how often we're good at following instructions. How often do we listen for God's voice amongst the noise and the distractions of other pathways? Have we learnt enough? followed enough to know what to do next after the sacrifice is being made or are we still running around in circles God desires to be our mothering gathering protecting him are we willing to listen to God's calling and allow God to guide us and protect us truth can be hard even painful but without it how can we know who we really are how can we find our place with God we are all welcomed in our diversity of human experience and we are gathered into God's loving protecting embrace if we choose to listen to God's voice then we continue on the path of finding our place with God in our living. Let me pray. Faithful God, we are awed by Jesus' ability to keep focus on his goals, to hold fast to choices made years earlier, now that he could see what he was going to cost him. We give thanks for all who, like him, refuse to stop caring for others even when they meet with nothing but cruelty and rejection. Thank you for the vulnerability that never left him and that was part of his strength. We pray for parents trying to give their children a firm foundation, especially if they've not received what they needed early on to feel safe in the world. We pray for politicians and civil servants, for charity and aid workers, teachers and carers and all who choose a life of public service because they wanted to make the world a better place. We pray for those who, like people whom Jesus saw in Jerusalem, have lost their sense of purpose and direction, those who have been let down too often to trust again, those, again, including ourselves, who cannot bear to watch or listen to the news because there's just too much suffering in the world, 
too many problems that cannot be solved, too many people beyond our reach to help. Loving God, give your compassion break through all our defences. May we be willing this Lent and Easter season to take just one more risk for love's sake in the eternal battle between goodness and evil, love and hatred, life and death. May we discover with Christ and all Christ's faithful servants the goodness and love and life are always stronger and will win out in the end. Amen. Let me offer you a blessing. God is our light and our salvation. We do not need to be afraid. God is our loving parent. We are cared for. Follow Jesus into God's world. We go in hope. We go in love. Amen.